Hi guys, I'm Sam Land uh, for Hive Magazine, and I'm joined today, very special guest, Blackpool's very own Henry Cox from Boston Manor. How are we doing? Um, there's a new album, Datura, next Friday the 14th. I've been lucky enough to hear it on a press copy. An incredible album, so congrats to you guys. What can we expect for the, from the album? Um, I suppose if you're already familiar with the band, it occupies uh, familiar territory, but it's the first part of a, a larger concept that we've been working on for a few years now. Uh, that's why it's such a short track list, because it's one half of a, a larger whole. Uh, it's a concept record. It's a pretty dark sound of record. It's it's kind of sort of set at night, so to speak. Um, yeah, it's it, Dechora is a, a flower that blooms only at night, which is yeah. why we call it that. And it is a piece that we wrote with the intention of people kind of being able to digest it in in one sitting. Another reason why it's we sort of split it into two parts. So yeah, I hope people kind of um, come at it from that angle um, and 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 they get a chance to kind of listen to it. Oh, it's only like. I think 27 minutes. Yeah, just, just, just under 30, yeah. Was it yeah. always the plan to make it a two-part album or was that something that happened in the process of making it, deciding, you know, what, we'll split it down and make it into two shorter pieces? It was always the plan, actually. We talked about it for a while. Uh, we did, <coughs> excuse me, we did uh, Desperate Times, Desperate Pleasures before that, which was our first foray into EPs in, in quite a long time. And we really enjoyed the the format of like creating something that was a little bit more uh, concentrated and shorter. And we kind of thought, I, I miss having the focus in a way when making a record. Because if you write make 14 tracks, not that there's anything wrong with that, and we probably will go back to making 14 track albums after this, but I don't know. But I, I do think sometimes there is an element of like, It being well, first off, you you spend a long time making fourteen songs, and then you just look at the analytics on every streaming service. And after about track six, track seven, the play it is just off. yeah, massively. And that's just the case with with everybody because it's the format and the way that streaming has kind of engineered people to to listen to music. But also, also, uh, I I just think it allows you to be a little bit more editorial when when making records. You can kind of because we we recorded more than seven songs we recorded yeah quite a few songs and we we were pretty cutthroat and we're like nah that's just not up to par it's not it's not as good as the rest and or or it, it's just kind of doing the same job that this other better song is doing we kind of looked at it as like pieces of jigsaw puzzle what's what's working what's serving the 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 greater concept and what is just kind of i don't use the word filler but you know what i mean yeah is there, is there anything you can reveal to us about part two? When can we expect stuff from that to start dropping? When can we expect the full album of that out? Is there anything that you can reveal yet? I have a plan. I don't want to reveal it in case it doesn't go, it doesn't match that timeline because things just shift all the time. But you know, we're working on it now. Um, we'll we'll hopefully get a bit of studio time um, early next year and start kind of chipping away at it. I mean, we've started to now do things in little little sort of chunks as opposed to kind of one big block of recording. Yeah. Which I'm put in. So, you know, we kind of do two weeks here, two weeks there, go back and forth. So the plan is after Christmas to start actually tracking some stuff. Um, and we're writing all the time. We never really stop writing. So that's the plan. <laughs> that's the plan, <laughs> we'll if, it, if that works. Uh, so... What what I like about this new album, and it's quite different from like even from like uh, Desperate Times and Glue uh, from two years ago, is like there's a lot of more like electronic sounds on it. So I was wondering kind of where that sort of direction came from. Yeah, um, I I mean, I I that I love all that like kind of shit. I mean, I make a lot of that kind of music on my own, um, and also like this desk in front of me is just covered in synths everywhere 
Um, it's kind of my my little weird hobby. Um, but I, I, all of us are into bands and kind of grew up listening to bands that really um, use a lot of that. You know, like Nice Nails, Death Tones. Yeah. Uh, you know, the kind of time when I started buying CDs, it was not uncommon for bands to have a DJ in the band. Yeah. <laughs> um, it- Go on, sorry. I've got to say, the, uh, the track before Inertia on the album, which is just a full, like, three-minute electronic atmospheric cut. So I, was mm. I also kind of wanted to d- dive into that. Is that something we're going to see more of? Because apart from the FY1 interlude on Neighbourhood, it's kind of the first time you've done something like that. Yeah, I mean, there will definitely be interludes on the next record. That first synth I held up, actually, is what the whole of that interlude was made with that synth. Um it's really weird, like organismic synth it's called. So it just kind of has a bit of a life of its own, which is really interesting. You can kind of just plug away at it and turn knobs and press buttons and it just creates really strange evolving sounds. Uh, but I do love interludes. And I think <laughs> I think this whole record is is the purpose of it is to kind of put you in a in a world that we've we've built and kind of let you let it be really 3D. You know, you can kind of get in it and walk around and touch it and smell it and hear yeah. it so i think interludes do a really good job of doing that and and they can serve as palette cleansers to ease you into kind of different sections of a record and they can also just give you a little bit of time to breathe um and i i do think that a lot of the music i sort of first listened to a lot of the albums i should say that i first listened to when i was old enough to like buy cds or get them for christmas and stuff there used to be loads of interludes in, in records, like particularly like hip hop records. I used to listen to a lot of hip hop when I was a little kid. And do you still do you remember... listen to stuff like that now? Or are you just sort of more on, on rock, listening to more rock albums? I, I listen to everything, man. Like literally, I, I hate, that's a bit of a, a bit of a cliche, isn't it? Like, oh, I listen yeah. to everything. I, I genuinely, I, I get something out of almost every sort of genre of music, really. I, I try to. And, you know, I think we all go through little cycles, don't we? Like, mm. uh, or you know you'll have a month where you just listen to loads of metal and then a month where you listen to drum and bass I don't know but but yeah I, I I've still listened to all sorts of stuff I was it was probably the first genre that I really connected with I think when I was a little kid um maybe just because it was what was really popular um in the charts at the time you know like 50 Cent and Eminem and all that kind of stuff but Eminem is a good example because I don't know if you remember but he used to have like skits yeah, uh, he used to be like, like he called them skits, and then he'd also have interludes as well, all throughout. And he'd he'd have like thirty two song albums, and and like half of them would just be like fifteen second weird like moments. But it definitely kind of made it feel like a a, bigger, a larger con- thing. Yeah, yeah, bigger concept. So I'm like you. I'm from Blackpool as well, so I kind of know what it's like. Oh, there, I'm sort of interested how has like Blackpool mm. influenced the band over the years. Because obviously, Welcome to the Neighborhood is kind of set in Blackpool, but from like Glue, Desperate Times, and the new album, is it still in that world, or has he kind of moved out of it? This record is 100. percent Yeah, uh, this record is kind of back in that Welcome to the Neighborhood sort of like noir esque version of, of Blackpool that we've we've been creating, and I love it. I mean, I it's. I've, I've been recently describing it, and it might sound a little bit pretentious, this, but I've recently been describing Blackpool as like my muse, and I really do kind of think it is in a in a in a large sense, at least for for Boston Manor, it really does, and everything really, it it is such a influence on the aesthetic and the sound and 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 us as people because you know we still practice and 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 write. And even record in the very center of the town. All uh, you know, uh, card. Every... what's that? Rock hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was there like two yeah. days ago. Um, I, I did some work yeah. experience there a few years ago. Did um, you really? That, that's why I got introduced to you guys. To be honest, it's like no way full circle moment. That's cool for me. Back, is... back in 2017, before a neighborhood even came out. Oh, that's sick. What did someone that was working there just tell you about it, or did you ever hear it... us? Yeah, I, I think it kind of it kind of just came up in conversation, and um, it was either Dan or Mike. It was one of the guys just sort of was like, "Oh, check out these guys," as well because I was talking to him about sort of rock at the time, and that's no how I, that's how I kind of introduced to you guys. Oh, that's really cool. I mean, I used to practice there with like my old bands before. Well, we all did. We were all in bands yeah. before 
the manner and we all used to practice there it's, it's a real little i mean it's 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 really served musicians well over the years in blackpool but yeah you know we it's it's kind of the center of our universe really everybody but me still lives in blackpool and and um i love it there i'll probably go move back there at some point it's it's well you know it, there's nowhere yeah. else like it. it's a very unique uh unique place and i just love the it vibe builds you as a character it, oh, it certainly does. <laughs> Definitely but can't I just love, like, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll come back and uh, go do a band practice or whatever, and then I'll just go for a walk on the prom and stuff and mm. just have a wander out. I just love it. I, I love everything about it. I love the people there. I, I think it's great. Now, I just sort of while we're talking about Blackpool, I, I, I want to ask, can we expect a hometown show at any point in either the near future? Is that in the works or? Yes. That, that, that's what I like to hear. Is that is that? I'm assuming that's at some point next year. Ah, uh, maybe, 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 not. maybe, but, maybe not. That's what I'll, I'll yeah. take it. I'll be there. The, field, the next couple of weeks, you'll see some uh, some info on that. So you obviously the tour with movements in Australia got announced this morning, um, which I you did supported you back in February. I was there. That was a great show. Um, oh, was it? Um, so yeah, just move on from there. Now I know it's happening at some point. Um, we obviously got a tour with Alex on Fire coming up, starting uh, on the date that that tour dropped on the fourteenth. What can we expect from the live show? Um, is it going to be more focused on the new album, or are you still going to have the songs from the older albums on it on the set list? Yeah, I'm a, a pretty a pretty even balance, really. Yeah, but there is quite a lot of new stuff, like off the new album and, and the, the last EP. Um, and I think the reason for that is that we've been a band a, quite a long time now, like nearly next year will be 10 years, which is mental. Um, and we've obviously changed our sound quite dramatically over the, the years from, from like our early EPs and our first album. Uh, and as much as, you know, we'll never like totally stop playing <clears throat> songs off the first record i'm sure like every now and again we'll come back to it but this tour is a chance for us to play to a lot of new faces and i think we kind of want to leave with our best foot forward and, and just yeah. kind of play the music that really represents us at this point so we're not going to be playing anything off be nothing and um and i'm pretty happy about that really because i, I think you know we've been working really hard over the past like three years to and i think we've been really hitting our stride with with the music that we've been making and i think if you're if you're a fan um a new fan, somebody just discovering a the band, then you would want to hear the stuff that is you now. Is. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, but you know, we'll always throw in all favorites and stuff. And um, you know, Welcome to the Neighborhood is still a, a very definitive album, and we still play tracks from from that record, and and we mix it up. You know, like some some tours and some shows, we'll just throw in a, a song. Like we we started playing Funeral Party the other day on that on a couple of festivals we've done. We haven't played that for a few years. Um, I don't think I don't know, but you know we we swap stuff in and out all yeah. the time. That's the beauty of it. We're not a band that has like a a super uh, rigid live setup, which means that we can be quite flexible and and just chop and change when we want. You know, sometimes mid tour we'll change the set list if it's not working, and it's one of the benefits to kind of being a little bit more um, punk for a band yeah. in, in terms of our our actual equipment and our setup for a band of this level. So you mentioned there that sort of like your sound has changed from the early days of being nothing. It felt, it feels quite natural. It feels like even on Neighbourhood, you still had some of that old sound. But then as time's gone on, it's less about the straight sort of punk sound that you had on that album. And it is now more atmospheric and more just sort of rock. Is that something that did happen naturally? Or was that always the intention of every time you go and make an album to make it sound new? Yeah, it, it's... It's a bit of both, really. The, the the two aren't mutually exclusive, I don't think, either, because I think we've naturally gravitated towards the music that we want to make. That's kind of always what we do. And, and I think, obviously, you could chart the shift from album one to album two as being like a very dramatic shift and the, the difference between album two and the stuff after much less so, because we've definitely sort of, I like to use the analogy, like we've found the the sort of, tools that we like to use in the shed so to speak um and it's just more about what we're actually making so we've definitely sort of discovered our kind of core base of of, of like the sonic palette if you like um 
and then from there it's just about kind of just pushing at the boundaries a little bit every time and sometimes you you know you you push one way and it's not quite right and sometimes you you try something else out and it works really well and that's that's where the interesting interesting stuff comes from i think um so we'll always try try different shit and and yeah we're we're, we're influenced by a, a wide variety of things um and i think if this doesn't sound too arrogant i think we've started to become recently quite influenced by ourselves in, in a in a weird way in that we I'm, I'm very proud of our discography um you know I'm, i wouldn't say that every track we've written is a great song i i'd say there's a lot of stuff that i kind of even listen back and think of it oh you know that's that's i would not do that now or i wouldn't listen to that now but i i'm very proud of it all and i think that sometimes well especially now the best thing to do really when we come to write is is to kind of like switch off from everything you know you kind of need to be listening to things all the time and enjoying music because if you're not a fan of music then what's the point but I think being able to kind of shut yourself away when it comes to create from the wider musical zeitgeist is really important because it means that you hone in on your own music and you don't start kind of comparing yourself to others or, or God forbid, like copying other bands, uh, yeah. you know, definitely be guilty of that. Uh, subconsciously myself, you know, several times over you, you go and record a track and then you come away and, and then your mum's like, oh, it sounds a bit like that, that song, that, that one on the radio. And you're like, oh, no. uh, but, <laughs> you know, it's 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 part of being a music fan. You know, you have all this, these kind of echoes of music history just bouncing around your brain all the time. So I think uh, just being into your own shit is kind of crucial, really. Um, yeah. And not, and, not, and not getting too serious isn't the right word, but... In your own head? Not... Yeah, yeah, I think just not not seeing every musical decision as kind of the be all and end all of your of, of of both the song and of your your career or your album or yeah. whatever you know. Is there a lot of stuff that you've either written or recorded mm-hmm. that's never been released that you would maybe one day like to be released, or is everything that you've recorded what you're what you want out, and you've, anything that's been thrown away is you're happy with being thrown away? The um so we've recorded a lot like so glue we kind of recorded two albums when we made glue and one of them kind of got thrown away or or we we wrote and demoed two albums and then one of them got chopped in the bin um and then every album you know we write fucking millions of songs um or demo them at least uh, and then some sometimes we've even we've even sort of uh, taken two bits of two songs and kind of merged them together and. Desperate Pleasures is one of those songs. And then and then also sometimes just kind of coming back and thinking, oh, that bridge we wrote in that demo that we didn't do anything with on the last record was pretty good and we could nick that. But usually uh, there's nothing that I haven't released that I would want to put out now. The only thing that we talked about recently and I'm actually kind of getting quite into is I went back and listened... <coughs> <coughs> really sorry. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> went back and listened to the demos over the pandemic on like a Twitch stream of like all the glue and and welcome to the neighborhood demos which is pretty fun uh if somewhat a bit narcissistic and i listened to the terrible love demo from it's a song from glue and the demo i think the original idea for that song is better than what the original song became i think we we deviated from the demo quite a lot and i think the demo was onto a better idea and we've talked about that and joked about it quite a bit but we've talked a a little bit about re-recording that song in the in the style of the original demo and, and kind of re-releasing it as a b-side at some point i think that'd be interesting because you've done obviously the acoustic versions of songs before so i think re-releasing a, like a brand new b-side of a song would be quite interesting to do yeah there's no rules as well you yeah know? like it's just music like just do whatever you want you know if people don't like it they can always go back and listen to the, the original version exactly yeah and also i was <laughs> i was i was having this conversation with mike the other day like I was thinking, you know, sometimes people, a lot of people are like, oh, seven songs, man. I just wish it was more. I was like, it's free. Like, you don't have to spend a penny to listen to it. If you don't, like, if it's not enough songs for you, it's free. This, seven, gonna, this, might, be like, a, this might be a really weird comparison, but it's like in 2018 when Kanye just made a bunch of albums with other people that were all seven tracks and they all were received mm. pretty much as some of their best work. So it, it's oh, yeah. just like, trimming stuff down is for the better yeah also again it's just the back to that kind of thing like there's no rules you know and 
we'll we'll go back to making longer albums maybe again we'll do a short album i don't know it's still music like it is we we have a higher turnaround rate at most rock bands you know in <clears throat> so sorry in um like three years we probably will have released like three albums and an ep yeah which is mental um so it, it seems like record. you guys always have some in the works whether it's a single an ep an album it seems like yeah, you can't go a year album. out with some for sure and it's not it's not because we sort of were like we need to or you know we do, we're just always on like we just always like making tunes and, and recording and we tour all it's our full-time job you know like yeah. so we were always doing the band so did the you know, pandemic back, influence uh, any of that at all just sort of especially like sort of since the pandemic stopped it, it has been sort of <laughs> consistent touring and new songs in the ep and then this album's out so without that sort of time to tour did was there stuff that came out of that that makes any sense yeah yeah i mean the, the whole last ep was kind of a pandemic you know project so to speak uh and even even like the torah the, the first song on the torah the torah uh that was a poem that i wrote in like 2020 and um was just kind of floating around didn't really have anything to use it for but i wanted to use it for something for ages and um <clears throat> i actually we actually put it on um Printed it on some like merch that came out like years ago. I don't know if anyone has even clocked that yet, but it was on some like joggers or something. Uh, so yeah, there's you know there's still stuff that's that's come from the pandemic and and a lot of I think a lot of thematically this record is is a bit of a hangover of the, the pandemic. It's a lot about kind of realizing that things aren't totally back to normal and that we have sort of changed as a as a as a culture. We've we've kind of shifted onto a maybe a trajectory that we wouldn't have done had there been no pandemic. And and I think a lot of people are just now kind of realizing how badly a lot of those things kind of affected us. Yeah. Uh, themselves, you know. Um, so I've got another question sort of going maybe past Datura. Who would you like want to work with on future albums? Because you sort of, uh, to my knowledge, um, you're working with the same producer that you work with on Desperate Times for uh, at least the first part of Datura. Are you working with them on the, the second part as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll then, he'll definitely do the next the next record, the next part of the record. Yeah. So going like after that, is there anyone that you want to work with that you haven't yet? I don't know. It, it's a weird one, that isn't it? Because you can sort of look at, especially when I was we were first starting out. You know, you kind of look at all these producers and you think, oh wow, like you know, imagine what it'd be like to work with like steve albini or, or like garth or you know people like that because they've made this record and, and they've made this record but it, it it's such a a unique thing the relationship between producer and artist and and it, it's just like a, a pair of shoes like you know they, they fit everybody differently and and i could say oh it'd be incredible to do a record with this person but it, it might not work you know and we, we've had like loads of zoom calls and things with and, and pre-zoom actual meetings <laughs> with people who you know about maybe producing an album for us and we they've worked with all these artists that we we love and and they're really cool but it, it, it's just about finding the right fit the right yeah. yeah um and we've been lucky to work with two amazing producers you know mike sapone who made glue and rocks the neighborhood is an incredibly talented person that changed the course of our band's history and changed us as uh, as songwriters and musicians <clears throat> um for the better and he's still one of our very dear friends you know we will probably at some point i imagine go and make another record of him uh, and same with larry you know he's brought a whole new energy to the band and and kind of a, a broaden our horizons in some ways and we're really lucky to have him so i at the moment it's kind of a don't fix what isn't broken sort of situation you know yeah um so i've got like a few sort of quick fire questions and then yeah. I mean, that might be it for us today. Um, so what is your favourite song that you've put out? Ever? Yeah. Or, or just in, in Boston Manor? Oh, I have no idea. I mean, I couldn't pick one. I'd, what? I'd, I'd, and and it's, it always changes every... Um, every week. <laughs> what, what, what's your favourite on the new record, then? What's your favourite on the tour? I think Crocus is my favorite on Dechora. I think Crocus or Inertia. I would both, say both really Crocus. good songs. Um, I don't know why I said a few quick fire questions. That was the only one I had. 
Uh, <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'd like to say thank you for your time. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure having been able to talk to you today. Um, I'm coming to the Manchester signing next week, so I'll, I'll be able to oh, take you in that. person. Um, but yeah, no, so thank you again. Well done on the new record. It, it genuinely is incredible. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much, Sam. I really appreciate your time and thanks for the, the great questions and stuff. But I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you in a week, I suppose, yeah. or a week in a bit. Week in a bit. Thank you. Bye. Awesome. Have a great rest of your week. You too.